um, if you would be so kind, Albert, if you could uh, uh, stand by with uh, the magic, uh, with our arms extended for a man who writes for the Marina Times, joins us on Fridays. He is uh, someone who can write about music, uh, or write about movies, uh, television. It's, it's culture that is his thing. In fact, he is the culture blaster. He comes and goes on a rainbow. Michael Snyder, everyone, please put it together for Michael Snyder. Yes. Hey, Mike. hey, hey. Yeah. Come on, people. It's a it's a special Valentine's Day edition of the Culture <laughs> Blast on the Mark T. Love in. Uh, yeah. co conveniently, I'll be reviewing a handful of rom-coms or uh, rom-com adjacent movies. Consider this an official alternate to watching um, the Hallmark Channel for your romance flick fix this weekend. What? And and to Mark, Kim, Albert, and our wonderful audience, you are all my Valentines. You give oh. me a you give me a heart on. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, oh, um, I do. And I'm, uh, with your iron rod. Oddly intrigued. All right. <laughs> Michael, so, what's on the big list from the Culture Blaster this well, week? Well, I, I, first off, I do want to say that yesterday was the kickoff of the totally groovy, mostly British film festival at the Vogue Theater on Sacramento Street. It runs until February 16th. You can learn more by clicking onto my conversation with Mark on the subject right here on the Mark Thompson Show channel, YouTube. Uh, as the program's very first bonus content, which I must say also features a delightful anecdote by Mark about what? his dining hall escapades as a student at Oxford University in the UK. Um, it's, it's a great story. Hey, which one do you use, Mark Thompson? <laughs> I needed a story that was related to uh, Britain because it's the Almost British Film Festival that Michael was so generous to spend some time with us talking about. And I mean, I, I didn't need a story, but just in the moment, I thought, oh, wait a minute, I rem I studied in England, so maybe I can tell this story. And then uh, it was a mediocre story. But hey, look, the point is, uh, it was fun to talk to you. And it was great that you are our first added content on the Mark Thompson Show channel. And it's all about the Almost British Film Festival, which is going on in the city. It's, it's mostly British. It's not almost. It's oh, mostly. Sorry. mostly. <laughs> I apologize. I mean, really, Mark. Really, I needed a longer segment to be able to remember what it's called. I also uh, um, I also cover the festival in this month's Marina Times at marinatimes.com, so check it out. Uh, let's get down to some uh, new movies. And again, like I said, it's kind of rom-com week on Culture Blast, and we will kick things off with Your Place or Mine, which is a pleasant, disposable excursion into feel-good diversion. Uh, after One Night of Passion in Los Angeles, uh, Ernest Achiever Debbie, played by Reese Witherspoon, and good guy slacker Peter, played by Ashton Kutcher, drift into the friend zone where they've remained for enough years that she has a middle school-aged son by a rebound beau. Once a would-be writer, Peter moved to New York, developed a lucrative corporate consulting practice, lives in a sparsely furnished high-end uh, high high-rise, uh, and has become somewhat of a player. Uh, Debbie is now divorced in L.A., and she's a buttoned-up uh, staffer in the office of the school where her overprotected son is a student. But to advance her career prospects, she needs to take a week-long accounting course in New York City. So the friends oh. swap cities, allowing Debbie to do the course and be on her own for a bit and giving Peter a taste of fatherhood as the guardian of Debbie's nerdy but wise son for the week. Uh, it's sort of a road not taken, relationship not taken thing. This is not bad stuff. Witherspoon is always likable, and Kutcher uh, recently reprising his career launching that 70s show role of uh, Party Hardy Kelso in an episode of the sequel series, that 90s show on Netflix, he's grown into an appealing, self-deprecating leading man. Um, even though they're not physically together for most of the movie, I enjoyed their long distance rapport and bought into the friendship. Aline Brosh McKenna, whose script for The Devil Wears Prada, I mean, it crackled with wit and savvy. She's the screenwriter and director here, though this is a feel-good piffle by comparison to Prada and a few of her other screenplays. It still has enough sharp edges 
and a game cast, which, by the way, includes standouts Tig Notaro and Steve Zahn, to carry it as a lightweight rom-com, if that's your thing, especially for home viewing this weekend. It is in theaters, but it's also on Netflix. Wow. How was, how was the chemistry between Kutcher and Witherspoon? Well, they're FaceTiming a lot, Kim, so I don't know. You <laughs> you tell me. Um, <laughs> I mean, one of those things is, will they or won't they be in the same room? <laughs> but that doesn't so, mean that it's a good thing. Right, right, right. So, so a better choice, as modern romantic comedies go, would be Somebody I Used to Know, which was directed by Dave Franco, actor, filmmaker, and brother to James Franco, and co-written by Dave and the movie's star, Alison Brie, and this Brie is decidedly not cheesy. You get it? Brie? Uh, cheese? Oh, well. Sadly, anyway. I do get it. Yes. Okay. Um, she portrays Allie, a reality TV show producer whose latest series is getting canceled. So she goes back to the Pacific Northwest town where she grew up to lick her wounds and see her mother and immediately runs into Sean, the one-time love of Allie's life, who she dumped to go Hollywood. So stung. Sean, played by Jay Ellis, stayed behind and took over his dad's construction business. But Allie now has thoughts of getting back together with him until she realizes Sean is about to get hitched to riot girl rocker Cassidy, played by Kersey Clemens. What Allie does in response to the news is spicy, to say the least, uh, subverting the cliches of most wedding rom-coms. Somebody I used to know is written with a wry touch and acted with a sort of uh, natural ease that elevates it above a oh, hipster hallmark, you know? I mean, huh. it, it features a heroine whose moral compass is pretty out of whack and some full frontal nudity. You won't see that on the Hallmark Channel. You won't. Anyway. Oh, wow. Uh, how dare you, Albert? Uh, I <laughs> am... Um, uh, 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 Brie is pretty damn good here, and she's got some nice scenes with Danny Putty, her fellow cast member uh, on TV's Community, uh, here playing one of Allie and Sean's longtime friends. There are cameos of note, uh, Amy Sedaris, Haley Joel Osment, and Julie Haggerty, for instance, but it's mostly Brie's show, although she gets wow. strong support from Ellis and Clemens. Uh, Brie's self-centered and conniving Allie is more than enough reason to give somebody I used to know a watch, and you can watch it on Apple TV Plus. It's streaming there as of today. Wow. And the other was on Netflix, right? Uh, yes, it was. So you're getting a little streaming bonus for your uh, Valentine's Day weekend, are you not? Yes, it is. <laughs> we are. What else do you have? Okay, dumping on a movie as earnest and good-natured as seriously read would be like kicking a puppy, uh, something I would never do, especially not during a weekend dedicated to the Hearts and Flowers holiday. I will say that it's a sort of well-meaning, inclusive mishmash that's carried by the gumption and the cheery countenance of its star, Crew Boylan. Uh, K-R-E-W, and it's a woman. Anyway, Seriously Red is a broad comedy from Australia written by Boylan, who's a somewhat goofy but attractive redhead. She plays a misfit woman named Red who gets uh, canned from a job as a real estate agent and decides to pursue her true passion and become a Dolly Parton impersonator. Red, Red has a decent singing voice and has always tried to live her life according to her heroine Dolly's warm and welcoming philosophy. Soon she's fallen in with a whole community of celeb uh, celebrity impersonators overseen by a former Neil Diamond impersonator played by uh, the ever able Bobby Cannavale uh, at a club where the shows are emceed by an Elvis impersonator played by Rose Byrne. Uh, wow. Maybe Cannavale and Byrne were both on vacation down under and had some free time to join the project. In any case, they bring some star power to the proceedings, which eventually involve Red's Parton, get ready, hooking up with a Kenny Rogers impersonator, Islands in the Stream. Anyway, if you're looking for insights into the how and why people pursue this sort of career, this is no documentary. Uh, Boylan may not be a great comedian, but she is like likable and she holds your attention even if the movie doesn't really go deep into red's issues seriously red directed by gracie otto is campy silly ephemeral stuff and that might be sufficient for uh, undemanding audiences it's in theaters and on various streaming platforms wow uh, there's a lot going on there uh a lot of impersonators uh, a lot of uh, music i'm guessing 
Is uh, there music yeah. or is it? No, yeah, oh, no, no. There's, there's a lot of Dolly Parton music. It's really That's wonderful. Oh, it's, yeah. I love. Well, I love Dolly Parton music. I hope you're not mocking it. Uh, Mike. No, I think Dolly would be flattered by this movie. I think they uh, offer special thanks to her. Uh, you know what? Let's get serious for one more film. Uh, we missed it last week. One Fine Morning, written and directed by the lionized screenwriter director. Uh, Mia Hansen Love is a bittersweet portrait of a modern woman starring one fine actress. Leia Seydoux, recently seen as James Bond's romantic partner in the last two Daniel Craig 007 movies. Um, this is a different genre from over-the-top international spy flick. Instead, it's a slice-of-life look at the current life of Sandra, a politically liberal radio host podcaster. Sound familiar, Mark? Um, no who is a single mother of a prepubescent daughter, now unfamiliar, uh, and is also dealing with her aging father's infirmities. Oh, my God. Wait, which are, wait. Yes. Which, okay. which are compelling Sandra to find professional care beyond what she can provide the old patriarch. Uh, into the middle of this comes Clement, an old friend, and a romance sparks between Sandra and the guy who, by the way, is already in a relationship with someone else, uh, with the uh, Charmant French leading man, Melville Poupeau, opposite a glowing yet surprisingly light on glamour Sedu, There is no lack of chemistry here. This has the most chemistry of all these movies between its leads. Uh, even though the problems Sandra has to confront are by no means extraordinary, there is a grace and a verity, a truthfulness that make One Fine Morning a thoughtful and affecting film. It's in French with English subtitles. Uh, it's in theaters um in various cities and opened in bay area theaters this past friday one fine morning one fine movie wow i'll ding under protest i'll ding verity yeah it would i mean that would be a um i uh, did offer clarification mark i did say you know truth truthiness oh is clarification a ding word now i got no clarification is not uh, a ding word i guess the uh the ding albert is now coming in as applause that's kind of weird isn't it you know, anyway uh, yeah. Michael usually serves up. Yeah, it, you see what I mean? It's kind of weird. It's this this uh, platform is a little janky today. But Michael's usually serves up. He's good for four or five, and today really only a couple. So uh, that was uh, it. So it's not really much of an issue. No, Let no. me uh, uh, quickly, uh, as you say, we close in on Valentine's Day. Review some of your reviews. Just make sure I'm clear on. Sure, it. And, and I'll offer uh, just with titles three of my favorite uh, romantic movies for people to maybe access. Oh, okay, good. Well, hold that, then. I will. I'll review, and then I'd love to hear that, really. Uh, One Fine Morning, the, the uh, film that you just had uh, touched on, it's in French with English subtitles. Uh, Léa Seydoux, the um, uh, love interest, if you want to call her that, in the uh, James Bond uh, uh, thriller. Uh, she's back, and you liked it. In fact, you think this is really um, a standout, wouldn't you say? Uh, the best of the four films, yeah. The best of the four films, there you go. Uh, your Place or Mine, FaceTiming with Ashton and Reese Witherspoon. Uh, it's on Netflix, and you thought it was okay, is what I got yeah. from you. Yeah, it's yeah. pleasant, and it's carried by the charm of its leads. Yeah. Seriously read the Australian offering with the Dolly Parton impersonator, who meets the Kenny Rogers impersonator, and they all go over to the Neil Diamond impersonator's house and have a grand old time. You actually thought it was... Again, okay. Uh, yeah, it, it's it's not great stuff, but it's not going to hurt anybody. And and you know, it, it's it's a it's sweet not hurt film. Anybody. It's a sweet film. It's just you know, like it's, it's uh, never been what, anything what, like and this. Where, <laughs> where can we see it again, please? Um, it's on various. It's in theaters today, and also on various streaming platforms like Vudu and all the ones where you can uh, rent a film. And someone I used to know, the Allison Brie J. Ellis Project, uh, you, again, thought it was okay. I liked it the best of the uh, three rom-coms. Uh, you know, let's discount the French film. Okay. Uh, so minus the French film, it was his favorite. Uh, yeah, it was again, spiky. It was spiky and spicy, Mark. I like that. All right. Well, you're a spiky, spicy liker. Apple yeah. TV Plus is where you can see it. Now, with only a second or two left, tell me your top three uh, or three outstanding viewable romantic valentine's day kind okay of movie. i'm not going to go into depth just note these titles 500 days of summer uh with joseph gordon levitt and everybody's manic pixie uh, dream girl um you know uh the uh 
you, you know who I'm talking about, the one from uh, Zoe you know, Deschanel. Uh, yes, Zoe Deschanel. Well, I um, do love her. I do love her. A, a room with a view, a sort of uh, Merchant Ivory type movie with a young and uh, and uh, incandescent Helena Bonham Carter. That would have been a big word if our ding had been working. Yeah, maybe the the absolute favorite of all my um love story movies because it's funny and it'll make you uh tear up is the lady eve preston sturgis's uh brilliant uh, you know i guess you'd call it a, a screwball comedy but it's it's got so much more depth than that um if you can find the lady eve it's a, a criterion uh production uh you can get it in other words they have a lot of lovely versions of it and uh, more to the point, it stars Barbara Stanwyck and Henry Fonda, and they are young and uh, they're, they're just electric together. The Lady Eve is maybe one of the best films uh, of all time. One of the best. Wow. Do you have any uh, romantic uh, films for Valentine's Day where the couple ends up breaking up and it's kind of sad? <laughs> um, well, uh, you know, that, that, that brings maybe tomorrow. there's a divorce. What was that no, divorce got, movie with Meryl Streep and Dustin Hoffman, the one that started it all? Kramer uh, versus Kramer? I don't know. Kramer versus Kramer. No, yeah. no, Maybe seriously. That on Valentine's Day. Uh, yeah. I'm actually working on a, a script right now uh, called My Sucky Valentine. I think that's what the problem is. <laughs> I like that. Give me something. Give me an alternative. We always do, you know, some sweet Valentine thing. Give me something where they're, you know, couples in the middle of a... What was the Adam Driver film with uh, Scarlett Johansson? There, that oh, couple was uh, that one... Absolutely yeah. um, uh, tremendous. Um, the, was, yeah, we talked about it a, a couple brilliant, weeks ago. Yeah, it was a brilliant actor's piece. And uh, and the couple is in the middle of what was supposed to be a uh, nice divorce, and it ends up really ugly. Um, you get the roses. nothing! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The war, that, that's not a fair... That's fair, but A Marriage Story is the movie you're talking about, Mark. And yeah, it, Marriage uh, Story. That's really a good uh, movie. from Noah right. Baumbach, and it might be one of his best. I, I do want to, again, wish everybody a uh, happy Valentine's Day. I, we won't be, I won't be on the air on the actual day, but this weekend is going to be a big weekend for romantic trysts, and I hope you all enjoy yourselves. And thanks wow. for listening, everyone. Ah, uh, yes. He comes and goes on a rainbow. I say farewell. The Culture Blaster, read him in the Marina Time. He's Michael Snyder. Bye, Go along, Mark. everybody. Yeah. Bye. Hi, it's Mark, and I thought that was great. Hit the notification bell, you'll know whenever there's a new video being dropped, and please subscribe to our channel to help us save the universe.